And now here they are, swimming all over the place after the gentle water change. Slight salinity to increase, finally down to 021. Uh, decrease. Decreasing salinity, you can decrease salinity faster. Increasing salinity, um, no more than a point a day. Okay, but they've been dropped about uh, two and a half, three points. From about 024 and a half. Maybe, maybe if that. It's 021. Just, just above 021 right now. And that's, that just, you know. When they get to that level, they generally have to spend less energy breathing, basically, is how that goes. But, you can tell when the copper treatment's working. Don't convince yourself they're okay, you know. I knew when they were swimming around back there, it's like, you know, they, they still don't feel that good. That's what they do when they're not quite comfortable. Still a little stressed out. They're both breathing a lot better, but still a little stressed out by something. So that copper, okay, uh, it's not harsh on the fish, you know? It's the reason why people have been using that for decades. Because you give it to the fish, and they're happy, man. Look at I mean, he's doing just fine. What you're looking at right now is the soon to be dominant female currently asserting dominant male type behavior. He doesn't want to chase the other one off. He just wants to make sure. Okay, you know I'm the boss, right? Yeah. You still know I'm the boss? Yep. You still know I'm the boss, right? Yep. You made your point. That's how a dominant male does. So this one's probably just turning dominant male. Otherwise, he wouldn't really bother with those nips if it was just a male and a juvenile. A little juvenile would just be swimming along and he would just be fine. But what the Mai Tai wants to do at this point is make sure that the other one doesn't outgrow him. So she wants to stay dominant. He wants to be in charge. He right now. Hopefully, future she. So, now they're back exploring their little corner. But as you can see, just you know, I did uh, my second two-gallon water change. Okay, an eight-gallon volume. It's twenty-five percent. Okay, and then added one more cap full up from a half cap full and then a half cap full and then a half cap full so I went up 50% did a water change put a half cap wait up 50% of the of the of the dose okay I did a 25% water change I did it again, and that brought me back up to 50% of the dose. Then I did it again, now that's brought me up to about 68% of the dose. 75% of the dose. So I can keep increasing it, it's going to keep fluxing up. Alright. And I'm not going to be able to keep track of it, but. If I see the fish getting stressed out, you know, I don't have a test kit. This is basically what this is turning out to be, since they didn't have the freaking test kit, is methodology on how to gradually increase the copper without a test kit safely by using some sand that you plan to discard. All right. And, um, again, don't be afraid of copper. You know, formaldehyde, you need to be afraid of formaldehyde, but. 
copper in small amounts isn't going to hurt any invertebrate life. I'm rinsing off the copper filter in there. Hermit crabs are being hermit crabs. Right. Damsel is just fine. But the stuff is dead. Yeah, that's what you want. You want the stuff to be dead. And the more dead the stuff gets, the happier the clownfish are. So. That's all for this little segment. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And, um, thanks Joey's for your, Joey and Emily for your prayers already. I'm sure my wife posted about the sick clownfish in the day. Peace.